Let's talk IBM. It was upgraded to overweight at Morgan Stanley, saying it's, quote, a place to hide during growing economic risks. It's one of our calls of the day. Shannon, you own it. Um, I mean, let's just call it like it is, right? You don't feel like it gets upgraded all that much. Uh, nor do you often find it called a place to hide during growth uh, economic risks. Yeah, it's I mean, it's an interesting call, uh, you know, really like the stock. It's got a very strong dividend yield. Um, we're coming into earnings next week, and I think the focus is going to be on on Red Hat and software growth. You know, they're, position, they're repositioning their overall business and pivoting, and I think it's an important um, acknowledgement that they continue to return capital to shareholders while they're doing that. Um, and so I do see this as sort of a safer place within the technology sector, um, but we do think that there's going to be growth here, and it's not just sort of a sit-and-wait staple um, of, the, of the sector, as some have described it. I mean, do why isn't it going to be, right? I mean, I think it's like there are a lot of bears on, on IBM who would say, what is going to get this thing going? Um, everybody talks about the same stories, right? Cloud, Red Hat, the integration of that, new CEO, right? A lot of respect for, for him. Um, the stock hasn't done anything in, in a year. Why is it going to be any different this time? No, and... Yeah, I mean, it's all about execution, right? And that's what the, the issue has been. And, and, you know, we used to talk about this in terms of, of Intel, you know, for, for years, right, ad nauseum. I, I think what we are looking for is that they are moving into an environment. And Red Hat is a, a very successful brand um, for them. And if they can continue to, to create additional success off of that platform, that where is where the catalyst is going to be for IBM. It, there's an execution question, but again, you're getting paid to see if they can execute on this new business model. And the transition away from their legacy business is a critical change that, if they can do it properly, will create this as a growing enterprise for the next three, or five, three to five years. Josh, you touched this thing? Uh, it's dead money. It's below the 50. It's below the 200. It's uh, it's in the middle of the range, basically no man's land. Uh, it, I don't I don't think there's a ton of risk to the downside. Maybe the right way to think about it um, is take the five and a quarter percent yield, which is still a pretty high yield, even given uh, what's going on with rates and pretend it's a convertible. So if and when it ever does break out to the upside, it's like you had a convertible bond turn into an equity. It ain't an equity right now. It's a bond. It's boring. Shan, um, I'm not, I, I don't think we need another word on IBM. I know how you feel. You hold the stock. You obviously hope that it improves and you think that it will with better execution and some other things. Honeywell, though, was named a catalyst call by idea at Deutsche Bank today. The price target goes to 230 and you own that as well. Yeah, we've been talking about Honeywell for a couple of years. So one of the things that we think about in terms of building our overall portfolio is this undercurrent of technology um, outside of the technology sector. And if you think about the way that Honeywell executes on its business, it's continuing to grow its operating margins. And by focusing on execution and the incorporation of technology into its processes, it's really hard to be an industrial conglomerate and get people excited about what you're doing. But I think if you're looking to find companies that can continue to innovate, innovate and disrupt, and have a, a cyclical tailwind like Honeywell should have over the course of the next couple of years. Um, it's a great, you know, sort of big heavy in the industrial space to add to the portfolio. Doc, you like it or not? I do. I like Honeywell, um, but I see everybody moving their price targets down, even though they reiterate their buys. So that tells you an awful lot, Scott, that the analysts aren't looking for nearly as much upside as they were just a week or two weeks ago.